Virtual reality. Reality so real, it's virtually reality. VR gaming has only recently become a mainstream phenomenon, but it's been growing in the shadows for over 40 years. So let's go back and look at the growth of virtual reality gaming, and find out how he went from the virtual boy to virtual sex. Disclaimer, some of this is either super simplified or I'm straight up lying to your face. With that said, let's jump right into it. In 1956, a dude named Morton Heelig created a machine called the Sensorama. What you would do is put your face in, watch a movie, and smells and sounds would be blasted at you in the box. Since people were f***ing idiots back then, they thought this was basically real. But it's obviously not. Fast forward nine years, and some Russian dude named Ivan Sutherland came up with the idea of the ultimate display. While the head-mounted display, also known as the HMD, already existed at this time, with separate video channels for each eye, the UD was the first iteration that was designed for consumers. Sutherland never actually made it, but he planted the earliest seeds of consumer VR tech with this concept. The field lay dormant for a few more years, with nothing super interesting happening until the 80s, other than some flight sims and video plays, basically a glorified museum attraction. With the Vietnam War over and all the gamers finally back home, gaming could finally resume. The head-mounted display was now mass-producible, and the first VR controller started to pop up. The Sayer gloves monitored player movement with light emitters and photo cells in the fingers, so when the user moved to a certain position, the photo cell reading would vary. This is really fucking cool, but a little binary. You ain't getting full gamer capability with these dusty-ass gloves and their limited moveset, but it was a step in the right direction. People now realize that they could start selling this stuff. It was at that level. VPL Research was founded in 1985 and was the first company to sell VR goggles and gloves. They, they went bankrupt five years later. But with simulation comes stimulation, aka gaming baby, and the first 360 no-scopers got their mitts on VR. If I were ever in a tragic and gory unicycle accident, I know I would want to be buried in one of these sweet gamer coffins. Virtuality was a series of immersive 3D arcade machines where you sat in a tumor with control of two joysticks. I'm not gonna lie, this looks fun as shit, and the average consumer agreed. Interest in virtuality and popular media's depiction of VR got people excited for the future, so the biggest video game players took their swing at it. Sega promised the release of the Sega VR in late 1991, but it was terminated because they thought, and I'm not making this up, consumers would get injured because the VR was too realistic. Keep in mind, this is what their prototypes look like. With the door wide open, in 1995, Nintendo took a slice at the proverbial VR ball, and whiffed the ball and launched the fucking club into their infant child's soft spot, melting it instantly. The Virtual Boy sucks, everyone knows this. But, while it was a commercial failure, it was ambitious. It had the right mindset. Nintendo peddled VR to a market that wanted it, but the VR they provided just so happened to suck mega ass. Still, the fact that people were disappointed and or excited showed a market existed. Not much happened for VR in the early 2000s, but I would argue the most culturally significant thing is the release of Spy Kids 3 in 2003. It was one of the first movies to have its entire plot revolve around VR gaming, and the critics and their hubris lambasted it. I think this movie rocks, and it gained a weird cult following and got a lot of kids excited for a future like the gross CGI world of Spy Kids 3 Game Over. Considering this was the biggest VR event of the 2000s, I don't even consider the rest worth my time. My time is money, and I stack money like cards. 52 bands tall. After a brief hiatus, the VR gaming world stepped forward in its biggest way to date. In 2010, an 18-year-old Palmer Lucky created the first Oculus Rift prototype. In 2012, he made a Kickstarter, and in 2014, Oculus was bought by... Facebook! This was a turning point in VR, the Battle of Gettysburg for virtual gamers everywhere. Momentum quickly built behind the Oculus brand, and other companies wanted in. In 2016, HTC's Vive was released, and in 2019, Valve's Index released. Standalone took over the market with the release of the MetaQuest 2 in 2020-something. So now that there was hardware, we needed software. So let's take a look. In the earlier days of modern VR gaming, titles like Superhot and Beat Saber ruled the market. Don't get me wrong, these are a lot of fun, but they're definitely built with VR limitations in mind. You stand in one spot, really only moving your hands, and with very few games being longer than 5 hours. If you were going to move, you were going to teleport, and if you poked your head through a wall, you were going to go through it. There were some creative workarounds though. Budget cuts had you shoot out portals to pre-fire and move around. However, true, smooth locomotion was rarely used outside of, like, maybe onward. In the background of all of this, though, a little guy named Brandon Latch and his team started to make some money moves. They developed an impressive physics-based prototype and allegedly showed it to Valve to have permission to make a Half-Life fan game, 
but was denied for seemingly obvious reasons. So Brandon and the boys chugged along, and in December of 2019, Boneworks released. Boneworks was a huge deal, not only because it's just sick, but because while it didn't invent smooth locomotion or physics interactions in VR, it used them so effectively and was the longest VR campaign ever released at the time. I have no proof of that, by the way. It opened the floodgates for impressive single-player campaigns like Half-Life Alex to release a few months later, and the industry saw massive growth for a while. But now we're in the dark ages. Now smoking these meats here. Meta is trying to take full control of the market with its metaverse. People are having e-sex in VR chat, and nobody other than Stress Level Zero and the guy who made Vertigo 2 wants to release games. But we just have to hope for a better VR gaming future. There's a light at the end of the carpal tunnel. We just need to believe. I personally go outside quite often and stack mad paper, so I'm not too bothered. But for the rest of you, I'm sure Ready Player One is right around the corner. I hope you liked this little dive into the history and the mystery of VR. Thanks for watching the third episode of Blank in Blank A History, and stay tuned dipshits because we got a lot coming up. Oh,